Well, good afternoon and a warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be fitting the Innov K3 dual motorcycle camera system to the BMW R1250 GS Adventure. And if that's of interest to you, you want to watch the video. So before we go out to the bike and fit the unit, you should know that I've already done an unboxing video on the Innov K3 dual motorcycle camera system, and you can reference that up here on the card on the right hand side here. And that includes running through all of the connections, running through what's in the box, running through some of the features, and actually comparing it with the K2, which I've owned for quite some considerable time as well. So. I should watch that before you actually watch this one and this one I should be covering the specifics of fitting it to the adventure and showing you where the various items fit on that bike. I will also be covering the firmware update which of course is applicable to the unit not specific to the BMW machine and also showing you some of the app features. So hopefully that will be of interest to you. Let's go out to the motorcycle. Okay so here we are out by the bike. Now I'm not gonna show you panel for panel how we fit this because quite honestly, you can refer to my K2 in of video up here and my refarkling video. I'll put a link to both of those um, on cards up here on the right hand side. Um, but effectively for me to do it my way, which is to make it as clean an install as possible, I have removed all of the panels off this side um, this panel off the top of the tank. Um, I had to remove some this side to be able to lift the tank slightly, which enables me to get the cables all exactly how I want them, which is right the way down the right channels, cable tied to existing wiring. You've heard me say this a lot before if you, if you follow the channel regularly. What I will do, however, is I'm gonna go round and show you each and, in ev each and every individual fitment, so the front and the rear cameras, the remote control unit, the DVR, the external microphone, uh, the GPS unit separately, so that you can see exactly how this fits to the BMW R1250 GS Adventure. So let's get in a little closer. So here's the main components of the unit. The DVR unit is sitting here under the passenger seat on the BMW R1250 GS Adventure. I've cable tied all of the camera leads together and I've just pushed them over that far side. Now importantly the DVR unit which I used to have sloping up against the tyre pressure monitor here I've actually had to mount flat because it ju does just contact the seat. These are the seat posts here so as long as you can what I normally do is fit the rear seat and then look underneath every angle and in fact it was just touching in the very top here so I've laid it flat and that seems to make it completely clear even when I've got a passenger on. You can just see my CanSmart unit poking out there and in fact there is the uh, posi tap that I'm using into one of the CanSmart wires to feed the yellow switched wire here from the power supply so everything is clear and the most important thing with wiring try and keep it tidy keep it cable tied together um, and keep it out the way of everything now in the back seat it doesn't matter at the back here because the lugs just drop in and slide forward but just make sure you've got no wiring through that hole so I've just pushed a screwdriver through there and made sure that I haven't got any of this wiring actually protruding directly below where the seat is going to latch in then if we move to the front here, you see I've stuck the, by the way, all of these have Velcro on the back of them, so they're all secured. They're not going to rattle around. They're not going to jump around while the bike is, is jumping around. Here we've got the power supply unit, the power converter from 12 volt to 5 volt for the, for the camera unit. And obviously the yellow wire is going down here. We can just see it here. Um, again, I've cable tied it to these units here. It goes underneath the seat brace and emerges in the back. And then you can also see here that I've got the 
camera wires, the GPS wires and the remote wires all go down in this trough here out the way. So they've all come by taking the panels off that I showed you earlier and removing this unit here. I've managed to push them all under here and then they go up through here and back out here by the fuse box. So there's the one from the power supply just in there and then the others from the cameras and the remote just lie along the side there again go under the seat brace and attach in the back there so that's the main parts of the equipment here connected obviously the power supply here the uh, red and the black lead need to go down through here and they come down in the battery we'll show you that in a second and obviously the GPS unit needs to come from here under the seat brace and it actually goes under a panel here on the left hand side but again we'll show you that in a second so here we are at the front camera and as you can see I've um, fitted it to the bracket of my D4 Denali lights now I'd really love to get it right up at the front but I've never successfully been able to do that and part of the problem that you get where I have it mounted is the fact that the lens is a 120 degree lens so a very wide angle lens and that results in you just being able to see the front of the beak here up in the top of the picture but if you are using it for recreational video you can zoom in and crop that out um, and certainly for any evidential video I'm sure it's not going to cut off too much of the evidence that you might need for bad driving or in an accident but you can see that I've used one of the L-shaped brackets that came with the Inov camera and I fitted it with the long sliding side into the Denali light and the short one out from here. Now I may be able to reverse that, but then I think that might stick out a little bit too far. It'd certainly get rid of a little bit of the beak there, but anyway, that's, um, that's how it's fitted there. Just very interestingly, um, be very aware that you need to get the in of as near to directly upright on these cameras to make them totally vertical. Now, I leave these fittings here a little loose and then start up the bike, look at it on the app, and then rotate the lens very carefully, not pushing the front or not doing it with pliers or anything like that, because these, whilst they're good quality die-cast aluminium, you know, they will break and they will unscrew. So make sure that these are loose and the bracket is free and then just rotate it till you've got it right in the app and then just tighten them up, which is exactly what I've done. And then you get a totally level field of view. So the GPS, as I said, the wire comes along this tray here and goes down under here, underneath this bracket. You can just about probably see all the wires for the um, front camera here and the remote control. But the GPS is under here. Now, if I just remove this with a Torx 25 screwdriver, there we go, then we'll be able to see the GPS unit. Now, all of these GPS units are relatively low powered, so what's most important is keep it away from, obviously, the DVI unit, which can give it interference, so keep it away from that if you possibly can, and obviously keep it upright and as near the outside of the bike as you can, and certainly not underneath any metal. So under here is ideal. I've actually fixed it again against a piece of Velcro. It's the correct way up, and there is then if you Velcro it right over to the side there, there is then this little piece here where there is a void that that fits into. Now I have put plenty of cable in there and part of the reason that I put that much cable in there is so that when I pull this off, I don't suddenly wrench the GPS out. So just giving a bit of extra wire. And of course it's wiring you don't have to hide somewhere else. So you'll know that I always put Vaseline on these connections here just so that they go in relatively easily into the rubber. Just make sure that all the cabling is tucked away. Drop it onto its peg, like so. And then we should be able to just get the Torx 25 screw and roll her back into place. And there we go. So the GPS unit quite nicely hidden behind that panel there. Once again, because of the very wide angle, 120 degree view of the cameras it is quite difficult sometimes to get these fitted and not get other things in view but if we look very carefully here we'll see that the adventure 
indicator, rear indicators, are actually on these long stalks, which the GS isn't. So the rear fitting of this is a little easier on the GS. But what I've done here is, again, I've used a standard in-of bracket, the long side facing out towards me and the short side here. I've fitted it in the same connector, the same screw as the indicator is held on by. And then I've put the block on the back side of that bracket. Again, these brackets are so universally adaptable that it's really, really good. Um, and then if we just make sure that the camera is as far back as we can get it, then you can probably see that the indicator is, if it is in shot, it really is only just in shot. And we'll see that on some of the demonstration footage. Um, it just sits over the top of the number plate and underneath the indicator there. Now the wiring, we'll just show you that. You can see just goes from the back of the camera unit here and I will put a in of give some little 3M clips that will clip to plastic so I will probably just clip that up because I'm a little bit fussy with my own vehicle um, and then you can see that it goes up through here and actually up through the mudguard there now to actually access that it literally is just the bolt above my finger here and one on the other side and then you will find that if you push the number plate forward sorry, push the number plate towards the front of the bike and drop it, that whole number plate together with this plastic bracket here will just fall backwards. And that's actually also where the routing from the indicator goes. So as you can see, that cable goes in there and I can pull it backwards and forwards. It's not trapped or looped in any way. And that takes it directly into the seat cavity that we saw with the main units. Now the remote control is probably about the trickiest part to fit and part of the reason for that is that when you look at the mirrors on the BMW, um, just take this gator upwards here, um, you will see that there are two, actually two bolting pieces and you will need two 14 mil spanners. The bottom one is right hand threaded so that actually turns the normal way uh, clockwise to, to tighten and anti-clockwise to loosen whereas this top one is left hand threaded so it actually goes in the opposite way so if you put two spanners on there you just push them in opposite directions and you'll find the whole mirror assembly will come loose but you've then got to turn both uh, nuts in the opposite direction and you'll find the mirror starts to come off so it takes a little bit of adjustment um, but hopefully you can see if I just move the camera downwards a little you can see there that there is a an adjustment on the bracket that you get for the remote control which is a tapered bracket so it'll fit big and small ones and you just want to make sure you don't get it too far back so that you actually end up bending the wire underneath too much and, and obviously that wouldn't um, that wouldn't be very successful so a little bit tricky that one but what's more important with the remote control is of course it's on the handlebars and the handlebars are going to move so it's very important where we route the cables with that and I'll just show you how I do that by connecting it up to the switch cables and the um, clutch wiring so that you can see how that all works so if we actually look here is the wire um, right at the bottom here um, for the remote so this is the remote control wire and as you can see I've got slack in it which is most important and it's gone through these collectors that rubber collectors that are used from standard on the BMW and it literally has enough slack in it to follow round and go right the way under the tank in exactly the same way as the other cables so hopefully you can see there is the remote wire right the way down is actually collected to the rest of the wiring that is disappearing under the tank and as the rain starts to fall we'll show you one of the new units it's probably not something i'll use much myself because i have um, other ways of actually recording the ride and recording my commentary but that's the external microphone that is now supplied with the k3 unit um, it comes with a wind muff as you can see and with a uh, tight what we call a tie clip um, and obviously that has the last remaining connection which is the red connection and that's here on my machine so red to red and if I just connect those two up um, I'm guessing that the wire wise there's probably something like one and a half meters of cable attached to this external microphone and that would certainly allow it to go up you know maybe 
uh, to the rider's helmet. So you could try it with that. It's a little bit trial and error. I'm not sure that, you know, I'm buying this camera necessarily for an external microphone, but I know it is something that they've had quite a lot of requests for. So, you know, you could, for example, put it somewhere like here um, and, and clip it on there. I'd probably need to cable tie it through that hole there as well. And that would obviously record or hopefully record near to the exhaust note um, but I would also say if you're going to have it externally like that in other words outside of a panel or outside of your helmet then I would keep it facing that way so that the wind is coming from behind rather than this way so that the wind is coming from the front so certainly it could go there and record the exhaust sound and then I could just pack up the wiring into my little void underneath the passenger seat a little bit like so and, uh, and it would be ready to go. So that's the external microphone. So the last bit to show you is the connection from the power supply, and that really is very simple. Remembering the power supply here um, has a red, a black, and a yellow wire. The red and the black wire are gonna come here to the battery, and the yellow wire we've shown you at the back connects to the DVR uh, via a, sh a switched supply, which actually I'm using my CAN Smart. So again, using a 20 Torx 25 screwdriver we can just remove the battery cover like so and you can see here is the red cable going to my positive battery post which is here so that's the red cable and then the black cable is just connected to the negative supply here and there is the blade fuse here now little tip with the blade fuse that I always do is take the blade fuse out tip the lid of the blade of the fuse carrier backwards and tape it all up and then as you tuck it through here and it gets caught and you pull it backwards and forwards it won't then rip the lid off it because the lid's held on with a little retainer um, so it's just a little tip there but again all of that as you can see goes up under the tank under the seat adjuster here and comes out into the power supply so we'll just stick that back on and that realistically concludes our part out with the bike here barring the firmware update so the next thing we're going to do is the firmware update which you should always look to do when you fitted this in case there's a new release of the firmware i think i'm on version one of the firmware and there is now an update which we'll show you now so let's have a look how we go about upgrading the firmware on the k3 in of dual camera system if we go to the inov.com or the inov.co.uk website, it's pretty much in the same place, and you want to look for the support tab, which is up at the top of the screen here, and then downloads. When you click on that, you'll see the four cameras that are available, the K5, the K3, the K2, and the C5. We, of course, want the K3, and if we click on the K3, it'll roll us down the screen, and you can see here is the K3 firmware. Currently, we're on version 1.03, which was released on the 13th of April 2021. It'll show you what fixes have been made in this firmware. So if you've got this particular issue, this should fix that issue, but you will cumulatively get all of the previous ones as well. So anything that's been fixed since the camera was basically made will be incorporated within the firmware update. It tells you how to upgrade the firmware. We're gonna go through that in a minute. And obviously you've got a link there as well to a manual if you wanted it, and also QR codes for the uh, to uh, Google Play and the um, Apple Store um, app for Inov and for this particular camera. So if we click on that, it takes us to a Dropbox page, which looks relatively bland, but up at the top here, we can see that the file that is going to upgrade the firmware is called k3.bin. Now that's very important because if we've downloaded a firmware update for this camera before, there is a good likelihood that on the machine that we downloaded it on, there will still be a k3.bin file in your downloads folder. So you must clear that out first, or you must at least make sure that this file is always called k3.bin, because otherwise, if I download it and I'd already downloaded it, Windows will increment a 1 to it, or a 2 to it, or a 3 to it, depending on how many times it's been downloaded, which will not work within the DVR. The DVR will only recognize a file which is called k3.bin. So we'll click on the download link and we want the direct download and up at the top right hand side of the screen we'll see the countdown as it downloads it'll download very quickly if we click on the show in folder at the top here now we can see the file that we need which is the k3.bin and if we right click on that to copy it and then we need to open up our 
micro SD card. My, mine is loaded into drive G here. And the important thing with the micro SD card is it must be formatted. So it must be blank. And the best way to get a blank um, SD card is to format it. Now, for safety's sake, format it in the DVR unit of the K3 because that will format it correctly. And we will paste our file in there. So we now on our micro SD card have our K3.bin file. We'll take it out to the bike to update the firmware. So with rain pounding down on the shed and bringing it indoors so that we can much easier see the status lights on the remote control here, we're going to update the firmware. Now I've put my pre-formatted uh, S micro SD card into the DVR now. I formatted it in the DVR and I've loaded in, in this case, the k3.bin file is the only file on that SD card. So I'm now gonna switch the bike on and we should see the remote control status symbols light up here. Hopefully we'll be able to see this despite the headlights and stuff coming on on the motorcycle. But in a second, there we go, we're starting to see them come on now and a little flashing. And hopefully it'll pick up the fact in a second that it's got the firmware in the card slot. Now, there we go. So we've now got a fast flashing camera symbol, which is showing me that it's updating the firmware. And there we go, it's still updating. What we're actually looking for here is the camera light to stay on and then these to start alternating flashing. I think that's probably the symbol that it's updated the firmware. So that looks to me like it's updated the firmware because we've got an SD card in the slot, so it's able to record, but it's also sensing that there are some issues with the Wi-Fi being connected and the GPS being connected. So I think in a moment, we should find that now that's stopped flashing very fast intermittently, that we have updated the firmware. And our way to tell that is to connect the unit to the app on your phone, and you'll be able to see at the bottom of that what you're updated to. And this is where we are before and after. So we're just going to have a very quick run now through the main features of the app, not all of them, but just the main features. To connect to the DVR, we need to go into settings. Now I'm on an iPhone 11 Pro here with iOS version 14.5, but we go into Wi-Fi, pretty standard on most machines. You can see under my networks, the in of connection there. So I'll just tap on that and wait for that to give me a tick to show it's connected. So there we go, it's now connected. Now, if you didn't connect there and this is your first time, you'd need to put a password in. The password from default is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you can change that in the app. We'll now go into the app and we'll go out to the main screen and you can see the tiles here. And the main tiles we're interested in are the top two and the left two on the middle row. So this one will show you what's actually being recorded currently by the, um, camera units, we just see my dog walking by there. Um, and the main picture is the front camera on this and the inset is the rear camera. And then you can see on this screen, the GPS is green. So my GPS is recording uh, the location. And then you've got the FR button there. And that FR button just allows you to flip the cameras. So you've got the rear in the main shot and the front in the inset or front only, rear only, etc. Coming out of that one at the top right, we've got the photo opportunity so it gives you exactly the same screen as the video one but all you have there is the ability to actually press the button there which I've just done and you'll see in the middle of the screen in a second take a picture successfully English isn't very good but it's taken a picture then we go to the middle row left and we've got document now this will show you camera files or local files local files are on your phone camera files are the ones that are still held in the camera so if we click on the camera one you can see we've then got other tiles, continuous video, which is your video that you're recording as a dash cam unit, parking video, which is if you've got the parking mode on and anybody knocks the bike, it'll record those videos into that folder. Accident video, so if a video is triggered by the gravity sensor, it'll drop it into there. 
key protection videos are the ones where if you press the remote control in the middle, the button in the middle of the remote control, it'll put those in there, the locked files, and then any photographs in the bottom box. We'll go into the continuous video one quickly, and we can see here we've got a top row that says all, which is the default, and then you can just show front or just show rear videos. Um, you can pretty well see them, to be perfectly honest, in the thumbnails here, um, but these are the, the files that are in the um, device at the moment. So we'll come out of that. You can select them. I would say to you, trying to download those from the app is very, very slow, so I really wouldn't worry too much about it. The main reason to be into here, if I'm perfectly honest, is to go into the settings, which is the cogwheel in the middle. And here we can see, just very quickly, the Wi-Fi name. You can change that. The Wi-Fi password, there we are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can change that in that area there. Um, the resolution below the camera settings, that allows you to change it from a 1080p full HD 30 frames per second to 720p uh, 60 frames per second, but I leave mine on 1080 uh, 30 frames a second. The bit rate is the uh, rate at which the bits can travel through the system. Now, this particular new system, the K3, has an improved chipset which is able to cope with higher bit rates. Higher bit rate, better the quality, but you may find that your card won't cope with the higher bit rate. So normally this comes default on high. I've set it to max so I can see what that works with on my card, but I may have to drop that back to higher to later date. The loop recording, that's the length of the files that it records. Now, there's a big temptation to move that up to 10 minutes so you get less files. What I find is I leave it on a minute purely because if you happen to get a corrupt file, you've only lost a minute. Whereas if you get a corrupt file in the middle of a 10 minute uh, video, then you, you've lost 10 minutes. Then video format, quite important. This comes by default as TS, which is a great dash cam uh, file um, type because it's far more reliable than any of the others. But the problem you get is, is to put it into most normal um, video editing software, you need to convert it. So I always put mine back onto MP4, which is a standard, standard um, uh, format. So the microphone volume comes standard at 80. I've pushed mine up to 100 just to see what that records like. Date and time switches on, so it'll time stamp the date and time stamp the images. Speed display is on, so it'll uh, display the speed on the images. My speed unit, units I've changed to miles per hour because we are in the UK from kilometers per hour. The GPS is switched on and the video stamp is in of. That just puts in of at the bottom of the screen with the date time and the speed display. Card capacity I've got in there is the maximum one, two, five, six. And I do have a card in there which is suitable for dash cam use. Go on the in off site and they will give you cards that work well with this unit. It doesn't mean that because you've got the best fastest card that it's going to work well with this unit because recording dash cam footage is a, a bit of a specialist recording type. Um, parking monitor you can switch that on we sort of touched on that um, if the bike if you switch that on and the bike gets knocked after you've stopped the bike then it'll start recording the video hoping to capture who's knocked it and the gravity sensor is to do with um, emergency use so effectively if your bike stops very quickly or drops on the floor um, it senses that movement and it will then start to record that footage and put it into that special folder we showed you earlier. Light frequency is to do with flashing of lights. 50 hertz is normal in the UK. Um, and then there's various things there to calibrate the time, re re restore the factory settings. Most importantly, at the bottom here on the system, we can just look quickly. The app version is in of 1.8.1, so you can compare that with the latest version. It should update when you do your normal phone updates, but probably more importantly, the device version, that's actually the firmware version. So you can see it's K3.2021, April 13, and I've got version 1.03, which as we saw earlier was the latest one. So there's a very quick run through the app.
Now that's the fitting of the Inov K3 dual motorcycle camera system to the BMW R1250 GS Adventure. I hope you've enjoyed it. And don't forget that I did do an unboxing video and features and connection video on this particular system as well. And you can reference that on a card up here on the right hand side. But if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps the rankings on the YouTube channel. And also, if you'd like to subscribe to me, then hit the subscription button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so that you're notified when I release any other videos and you can watch them straight away. Other than that, I'm really interested in comments, whether that be general comments about the channel or specific questions about this particular video. And I try to answer 100% of those, so leave those again down below. In the meantime, however, ride safe, stay safe. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot for watching and goodbye.